because we mentioned the concept so much and a lot of people know it, but can you say what computational reducibility is? Yeah, right. So, so I mean, the, the question is, if you think about things that happen as being computations, you think about the uh, some process in physics, something that you compute in mathematics, whatever else, it's a computation in the sense it has definite rules. You follow those rules, you uh, follow them many steps, and you get some result. So then the, the issue is, if you look at all these different kinds of computations that can happen, whether they're computations that are happening in the natural world, whether they're happening in our brains, whether they're happening in our mathematics, whatever else, the big question is, how do these computations compare? Is, are there dumb computations and smart computations, or are they somehow all equivalent? And the thing that I kind of uh, was sort of surprised to realize from a bunch of experiments that I did in the early 90s, and now we have tons more evidence for it, this thing I call the principle of computational equivalence which basically says when one of these computations, one of these processes that follows rules, doesn't seem like it's doing something obviously simple, then it has reached the sort of equivalent level of, sophistica of computational sophistication of everything. So what does that mean? That means that you, know, you might say, gosh, I'm, I'm studying this little tiny, you know, tiny program on my computer. I'm studying this little thing in, in nature but I have my brain and my brain is surely much smarter than that thing. I'm gonna be able to systematically outrun the computation that it does because I have a more sophisticated computation that I can do. But what the principle of computational equivalence says is that doesn't work. Our, our brains are doing computations that are exactly equivalent to the kinds of computations that are being done in all these other sorts of systems. And so what consequences does that have? Well, it means that we can't systematically outrun these systems. These systems are computationally irreducible in the sense that there's no sort of shortcut that we can make that jumps to the answer. Now, in the, a general case. Right, right. The, but, but the, so what has happened, you know, what science has become used to doing is using the little sort of pockets of computational reducibility, which by the way are an inevitable consequence of computational irreducibility, that there have to be these pockets scattered around of computational reducibility to be able to find those particular cases where you can jump ahead. I mean, one, one thing, sort of a little bit of a parable type thing that I think is, is fun to tell. You know, if you look at ancient Babylon, they were trying to predict three kinds of things. They tried to predict, you know, where the planets would be, what the weather would be like, and who would win or lose a certain battle. <laughs> yeah. And they had no idea which yeah. of these things would be more predictable than the other. That's funny. Uh, and, and, you know, it turns out, you know, where the planets are is a, is a piece of computational reducibility that, you know, 300 years ago or so, we pretty much cracked. I mean, it's been technically difficult to get all the details right, but it's basically, we, we got that. You know, who's going to win or lose the battle? No, we didn't crack that one. That one, Not that yet. one, yeah. right. The, Game know, the, theorists are trying. Yes, and then the weather, how it's, we- It's uh, kind of halfway on that <laughs> Halfway? One. I, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're doing okay on that one. I, you know, so long-term climate, different story. But, but <laughs> the weather, you know, we're, we're but, much closer on that. But do you think eventually we'll figure out the weather? So do, do you think eventually most think we'll figure out the local pockets in everything, essentially, the local pockets of reducibility? No, I think that the, it's, a, or, it's an interesting question, but I think that the, you know, there is an infinite collection of these local pockets. We'll never run out of local pockets. And by the way, those local pockets are where we build engineering, for example. That's how we, you know, when we, if we want to have a predictable life, so to speak, then, you know, we have to build in these sort of pockets of reducibility. Otherwise, you know, if we were, if we were sort of existing in this kind of irreducible world, we'd never be able to, you know, have definite things to know what's going to happen. 